Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, I'm going to give you a, a brief walk around at a, a trial uh, house uh, for the Southern Living Plant Collection. I've actually walked through here uh, in uh, videos uh, last year and even the year before. Every time I come in here, it's a little bit different. They actually have a lot of the Southern Living Plant Collection and Encore Azalea pieces set up um, in a display right now because they had some people come through. Um, they're always um, one thing about introducing new plants into the marketplace um, doesn't do a lot of good to introduce them if you can't find growers to grow them and so they invite growers here to take a look at some of the new exciting things that are coming uh, in the future some of that I can show you some of it I can't um, and I'll show you some existing things and some things that I already have in my landscape things that are being introduced um, in the next year or two I thought standing in front of these uh, uh, Senecios, uh, skyscraper Senecios uh, was a great way to start this video. Uh, I've got one of these uh, at the house. I showed it last year. This is a, a perennial in you know Southern California, you know Zone 10, 11, uh, but uh, um, up in my area in Zone 7, it's great in a container outside during the summertime, and then I can just bring it in as a house plant uh, during the uh, winter. Just a fantastic fantastic plant i put this vi a photo with this in the background on instagram the other day and everybody's like what is that blue what is that blue what is that blue uh but that is a uh, skyscraper senecia down here in south alabama they have to take the walls off the greenhouses uh during the uh, summertime it's the only way to uh to get the heat uh, out of here there's no fans that could actually pull the heat out of this place quick enough um so uh they uh, just cut the plastic off the side walls and they'll put it back up uh in the uh, late fall down here uh, this is a plectranthus, that Mona purple. I've got one of these in the landscape at the house I've shown recently. Thing just blooms all summer long, nonstop. Just a great plant. Uh, it's going to be an annual um, up that way for me, uh, but who cares? I'm just going to bloom like that for like eight months. And then, uh, you know, if it gets kind of stretched and leggy, these pots are a little close together, so they're a little tall and kind of stretched. You could go through here and cut all of these in half. Uh, within a week and a half, two weeks, they'd be blooming again. Uh, there's some purple pixie uh, Laura Petalum in here. I think they hide some away for cuttings because the best cuttings on these when they're trying to make new plants are the pieces that are hanging over the edge. So I think these are probably stashed away to make sure there's lots of cuttings available. They have all the agapanthus in here from the, uh, from the collection. I have most of these in my landscape that you'll see uh, during, this, uh, during this summer season. Uh, this begonia is just out of this world. This thing's definitely coming back um, home with me. Uh, just look at the uh, look at the foliage on this thing. This one's actually a, uh, a zone seven hardy uh, begonia. So this one's uh, for zone seven to nine, uh, and a big giant group of them. I definitely want to grab one of these. This will be um, released in the future. Uh, there's a group of uh, soft caress mahonia right in this spot that uh, have just been cut back. These were in here again. They're in here for cuttings. Uh, make sure that uh, they don't let them all go. And so they came through here and just cut the tops off of all of these. And I'll show them up. I'll show them to you uh, back where I started on the other side. These are those cuttings uh, stuck into trays uh, that are rooting out. So these are uh, plants for the uh, future, but uh, they can have that crop in this greenhouse and then come through and cut them off and, uh, and stick them in the uh, trays and root them out for future plants. Um, there's lots of things in here like that. There's some uh, sunshine ligustrum ready to go out to a, uh, um, be potted out uh, in the uh, nursery here or sold to another nursery to grow out for their customers. And lots of uh, Carex uh, in these trays right here. And as you go on down, there's Laura Petalum and, and more rooted cuttings. Continuing on down through the greenhouse, uh, I planted one of these Rosalinda uh, Indian Hawthorn tree forms. Uh, at my house uh, this uh, this spring, there's a video. There's a video for it. Um, there's lots and lots of uh, agapanthus, new ones for the future in here, and uh, and ones that have already been uh, released. Uh, this this lantana right here is called Firestorm. I have to have one of these. It's 8A Hardy, uh, and I'm in 7B, but I'm close to downtown Raleigh in a, in kind of an asphalt jungle. I think this one would be a perennial for me, so I'm going to uh, I'm going to give it. Uh, give it a try for sure there's some uh tacoma behind it this is one of the, another one of those things that just blooms uh blooms and blooms and blooms uh, all summer long they've got uh tacoma and tecumaria uh and again this is another one of those this is kind of a uh, 
a, a tropical perennial, so or or, or a dry area, um, warm winter area. Let's, let's call it. So in California, you know, and uh, Florida, those things are going to be uh, perennials. Up in my area, they're going to be treated as annuals, but they never stop blooming uh, the entire summer. So for me, uh, uh, definitely, definitely worth it. Uh, moving over to the uh, next row. Uh, lots of uh, just trial pieces back here where there's a block of 10 and 20 of lots of different things just trying out to see how they uh, how they perform um, they'll they'll trial them in all kinds of different ways there is they're in here in the containers they're out there in a, uh, a bed in the field uh, they're in the ground you know lots of different ways uh, to go about uh, trialing these plants make sure that they are hardy in, in various ways not just as container plants in a nursery but also in the landscape uh, as well. And uh, I've I'm gonna skip down here to where all these tables are for the Southern Living Plant Collection pieces and show you a few things uh, that are upcoming. I'm gonna briefly walk down these two rows where they've set up these displays, show you some things that are coming. Uh, most of these things you've seen in uh, videos that I've done in the past. If something looks particularly good that, um, that you've seen before, I'll stop and talk about it. Otherwise, you know, these are videos that I've shot in the past, but it's intermingled with things that are coming uh, soon. Uh, I've skipped, I'm sure I'm gonna get questions on what the uh, yellow grass was back that way or white grass. Uh, these are Lamandra. Uh, there's a couple different Lamandra in the Southern Living Plant Collection. I've got one of these in a container in my front yard and it actually survived the winter in a container. I was literally leaving it in the container to die because it, um, I, I just figured it would. And uh, I had a mild enough winter that it actually survived. Uh, it's a uh, zone eight uh, perennial. You guys have seen all the gardenias in the collection. These are Diamond Spire that were new this year. I know we've uh, covered those pretty thoroughly. Uh, all the variegated abelia, this is uh, Miss Lemon. Uh, the, um, the variegated uh, Clara. I have um, a Juliet uh, in the ground at my house. This is Romeo uh, right here next to it. Uh, all the conifers uh, I've covered, the Dragon Prince Cryptomeria uh, and uh, you know the other pieces that uh, uh, Nightlight Camiociferus that's on the table right there, I just turned into a uh, topiary uh, in a video. And, but there's a, a new, uh, they have a new uh, gold mop uh, cypress um, named cultivar that's coming. That's supposed to be very, very heat tolerant um, right here. I don't even know what the name of this one's going to be yet, but it's uh, um, so pretty excited to get, grab a hold of one of those and see how it um, holds up in the south, um, you know, uh, uh, through, the, through the summertime, keeping its uh, gold color. Uh, over on this uh, area right here, this is a new uh, super, super compact uh, Japanese holly. I think they're going to call this one a mini touch. So after soft touch, but a uh, more compact uh, version uh, of that. And uh, you can see how boxwood like that plant is. I think this is another Buddy Lee uh, introduction. I've talked about, I put in a variegated uh, Lanicera uh, nidia in uh, my landscape recently. And I said there's three new uh, varieties coming from the Southern Living Plant Collection pretty soon. I don't know the names of these. Um, or what they're going to call them, but you see how this one has this beautiful uh, purple new growth on it. Uh, that thing is absolutely fantastic. Look how perfect these little evergreen mounds are. Uh, very, very little maintenance to do on this plant. This is going to be a great low growing boxwood replacement or a Japanese holly replacement. This one looks to me like it's going to grow like Hellerai holly uh, type uh, growth, but really, really uh, tight, compact habit. Um, you know, boxwood boxwood type uh, habit. I've shown these uh, butterfly towers, butterfly bushes. This is magenta. I've actually put this one in the ground at the house and I haven't shown you guys. It's actually next to the driveway. The white one is out by the street uh, in, my, uh, in my videos. Uh, let's swing back around here, see, make sure we're not missing anything. Oh, this is, this is an Indian hawthorn that I put in my landscape that I haven't talked about yet. Uh, this is called Clean Sweep, I think is what they're calling this one. This is the most disease resistant Indian hawthorn I've ever seen. Most Indian hawthorns, and you've had overhead irrigation in a nursery, have, uh, have spotting on the leaves. And this thing's just super, super clean. I think that's why they're calling it uh, clean sweep. Um, let's see, I've shown the, uh, the variegated uh, Eliagnus, that olive martini uh, in the past. Uh, there's a, they have this light show bottle brush. I filmed some of these at some of the nurseries in the South when I toured. Uh, in February. I can't remember what uh, what zones they say these are actually 
uh, hardy in eight to ten. So I, I probably could get away with this with this bottle brush in my landscape if I put it in a uh, protected space. Uh, here's the uh, two distillium they, uh, uh, that you guys have seen uh, in my landscape. That's a jewel box uh, right there, and then that's cast in bronze, cast in bronze because it has bronze new growth on it all season. Both of those are in my uh, landscape. There's a white flowering hydrangea that I think is new for maybe next year. Don't know that there's a, a name on that one yet. Super interesting uh, flowers on that one. I've got this mood ring podocarpus in my landscape. Uh, and uh, uh, you guys have uh, seen me talk and heard me talk about this Roman candle podocarpus for probably two years. I love this plant. Here's one in a uh, 15 gallon container. Look how bright and showy that thing is. I started the video on the uh, skyscraper uh, Senecio, um, looks like they're trialing some uh, hookerellas over here and various other grasses. There's a cordyline right there. That is a striking, striking plant. Uh, not sure the, uh, the name of that one yet. Uh, here's some uh, uh, encore azaleas that are in bloom. They were showing off. There's some uh, uh, autumn fire, which I have uh, in my landscape. This is uh, uh, starburst, which is new for this year. I've got sunburst and starburst in my landscape and here's autumn lily autumn lily sometimes will have that little purple in it as well i've got this one in my landscape also i've already shown some of the Everillo carex and the uh senecio they look kind of good together uh there the other side uh showing off the agapanthus uh, on this table and uh a couple different uh that variegated lavender that is a that's a good looking plant uh, both lavenders are actually a uh, very good looking, very good looking plants. Uh, there's a few salvia back in the back back there that they're uh, trialing as well that look, look really fantastic. Uh, nice. Uh, th those need to come home with me <laughs> as well. Uh, all the nandinas, the sunshine ligustrum, you guys have seen all of these things many times. The three hydrangeas that they have on display. I have all three. I happen to have all three of these in my uh, landscape right now. It's this heartthrob, which is red, uh, and then fades to super, super interesting uh, colors uh, during the season. Mine's just starting to get some color up in Raleigh. Uh, the Deer Dolores and uh, Big Daddy. They have the same problem down here. The flowers are, the inflorescence are all smaller this year. They all are in my area as well. I don't know if that's just because they didn't get enough cold treatment or what, what that is. Um, going on there's a touch of gold holly look at that's big one in this uh 15 15 gallon container uh there's a golden uh, oakland holly and one another one in a 15 gallon container you can see how great of a screening plant uh, that actually is uh backing off i had passed by all the nandinas all of which i've talked about uh, many times on the channel here's one i'm super excited about and i'm hoping growers will be as well I think initially looking at this uh, Mahonia, the name of it's called Beijing Beauty. I think initially looking at it, um, some growers may pass on it, but I've had this plant in, my, in the ground for a year now at the house. I'll show it to you guys on the next tour video at the house. This is a fantastic Mahonia. It is three by three in my landscape. Got all this burgundy new color on it the thing bloomed for six months during the winter time i didn't show it to you guys because it's again it's a new introduction you can't find it yet so i'm hoping growers are going to grow this plant uh, i just think it's going to be a, just a fantastic landscape plant and again i think the growers are going to look at it and go oh another mahonia uh and uh, pass by on it um kind of easy to do when you're trying to figure out the things you're going to grow in a nursery you know to pass up sometimes on probably some things that are pretty good but again I didn't think I was going to be impressed by a new Mahonia, and, but that's a fantastic uh, landscape plant. Uh, coming back here, here's that quarter line. Oh, look at the color, the intense, intense color in that quarter line. We'd use this as an annual in a container up in my area. It could be brought in in the winter, I guess, and saved, but uh, down south, it, it can be a perennial. The Mojo Pittosporum, I have three of these uh, in the backyard. Here's another Pittosporum that they're releasing that has white new growth. It's starting to green up now, but the growth initially uh, earlier in the season is white. It's gonna be a big grower. A lot of Pittosporum are, um, but this one, uh, you know, it's covered in white uh, when it's uh, new growth in the spring and early summer. 
I'm gonna show one more piece before I wrap this up. This is an upright holly that I've been looking at here for the last couple of years called Screenplay uh, that the Southern Living Plant Collection is introducing. And normally I would not get excited about an upright growing holly. There's must be, God, there must be a thousand. I mean, not, maybe not a thousand, but hundreds of named varieties of upright growing uh, uh, hollies. This one grows super, super fast. Every time I've seen where it's been pruned uh, within a very short period of time, uh, it's come back out and put on feet, feet of growth. And so I think this one's going to be another one that maybe growers might pass on um, because it's an upright holly, but um, it's so fast growing that I think the marketplace is going to love this plant. I think consumers are gonna love this plant. Homeowners are gonna love this plant. This, this is a make your neighbor go away very quickly uh, kind of plant uh, that I, again, I think a grower should be uh, taking a look at. This is really a super interesting time uh, to me uh, in the nursery uh, trade. Uh, just so many new and interesting things uh, being introduced really quickly. You, know, you got me talking about it, maybe other people on YouTube talking about them, and you see you know, magazine articles and you know all kinds of advertising for new exciting plants. And then at the same time, you know, trying to find growers that can produce them uh, quickly enough to meet, you know, a new demand for something that's new or interesting. Um, you know, farmers, uh, including myself, I mean, I, I was, you know, had a nursery for 23 years. It's hard to convince me to add something, um, you know, uh, it, you know, in a growing cycle, you know, it's disruptive to add something new, you know, even, even if you know, it will definitely sell, uh, it's disruptive. So it's kind of, you know, it's a strange thing. Lots of new things being thrown at us, uh, not necessarily finding their way to the shelves, uh, you know, in, 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 a time, in a timely fashion. But, you know, um, every, every, every business goes through, you know, disruptions a lot like that. And hopefully, um, you know, growers will take on some of these things that I show um, in the videos for these uh, upcoming years. So thank you guys for uh, following along with the channel. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that little bell notification so you're alerted when I upload videos. I probably will have a little more content here on the Gulf Coast uh, before I uh, get back up to uh, Raleigh and continue working on my home landscape.